top five growth economies in the world, five are Africa. Congo DRC, Cote d'Ivoire Ivory Coast, Congo Brazzaville, Mozambique next door, and Tanzania. So it's no longer the seven fastest growing economies are African or the six, whatever economists said a, year, a couple of years ago, it's now the five. Well, we're down one or two positions, but we still have half of the top 10 growth economies in the world are African, and that is a good story. These are the great performers. Ethiopia, resource poor country, DRC, Cote d'Ivoire, Tanzania, and Nigeria. So Africa, at current rate of growth, Q3 last year, will doubling our GDP in half a century. This is why speed of growth matters. We see sort of three broad trends that, that are supporting the, the domestic driven growth in, in most of the countries. It's public infrastructure investment, triggered by that private investment, also triggered, of course, by the good growth performance. It's strong agricultural performance, and it's the rise of the service sector. If you look at some of the rebasing of national accounts, you actually see that. The service sector in a lot of African economies that are rebasing, that are updating the national accounts, is actually much larger than we previously thought, and it is one of the growth engines. On the other side, we have the Ebola outbreak in Guinea, Liberia, and, and Sierra Leone. There, there seems to be a sense that it's stabilizing a bit, but nonetheless, in terms of human toll, of course, it's, it's a very dramatic and, and horrific uh, uh, suffering that, that we see there. And, and it is also causing damage to the economies themselves, uh, but also in, in the surrounding neighborhood through spillovers on, on tourism mainly. And then we have sort of a third trend, which is, well, I'm not quite sure whether we should call it a trend, but, but very kind of idiosyncratic factors in, in a number of countries. In South Africa, don't need to tell anybody, growth is lackluster, to sort of put it nicely. Um, and ESCOM is not encouraging us in, in hoping that it'll be much better, um, though there are also some good news stories. Um, and in, in, in another, another other countries with macroeconomic imbalances, Ghana, until recently in Zambia, which, which are leading to turmoil and ultimately are, are, are weighing on, on growth as well. We've seen post-2012 dramatic cooling in solid commodity prices. This has been largely a China-driven commodity super cycle, and Axel, you referred to that, and the correlation you show of Africa's exports to emerging countries, particularly China, secondly India, has predominantly been this solid commodity story. Those, we've seen iron ore down 50% roughly, copper price again, under, under extreme pressure, 30-40% down in a year. And of course, when looking at many African economies, they're not so much resource dependent as they are single resource dependent. Zambia is entirely copper. DRC is a copper cobalt story. Botswana will be a diamond story, and on it goes. So this notion of rebalancing, uh, this is a phrase often used in the context of China, where China's growth is, is, is shifting away from investment-driven growth towards consumer-driven growth. The challenge for Africa now is can we rebalance away from commodity-driven growth correlated to the likes of China and other big demand economies for, uh, for extractive industry products towards more new drivers of growth in the continent. And I think this really is the ultimate question we must pose when looking at the future of Africa.